All right, Saturday morning, and I don't know. I've kind of have like a brain fog just on where things are going. I see something nice. Um, I have a little project in mind. I'm gonna do that right away. I'm really contemplating. I saw a chipper shredder for sale, and uh, nine horsepower. I hear it's a big joke those small ones, but I don't. Know, I feel like for what I do around here, I could. Re it would be nice. No, I just I don't want to be. In I don't want to be spending any more, but I don't know if I have a solid plan to actually just sell chips. I could do that. I think I come into so much uh, brush around here. Um, like that whole project right there, it would be so nice to just have something standing there, make chips, throw it back in the bush. I'm getting very tempted now. Either way, I got one idea. Uh, I'd like to make a little, what I'm calling a, a maggot dispenser. And uh, not my idea. I, I saw this, I don't know, I, th I think it was Justin Rhodes. He had something of a sort and other people make them too. But um, the idea is you put dead stuff in here. Flies go in here. They lay the eggs. The maggots want to leave their food source and hatch elsewhere. They crawl out of the holes, they fall down, the chickens eat them. So I'm going to make a little tripod stand, sit that up there and maybe make a little bit of bigger holes or something. There's, yeah, more along the bottom or so. I actually, the, there's a bunch of holes in there already and that was because I used this bucket to grow mushrooms at one point. Oyster mushrooms. Uh, I think, yeah, yellow oyster mushrooms. It's kind of nice. And out of each hole, they would, um, they would pop out. They would fruit. And this is what I saw this morning. Oh, ain't that pretty? Look at that. I got a few more blooms coming here. That's what happens when you don't cut all your stuff down. You get a little, little gift from God in the morning. Not that. Ain't that nice? It really is a blessing. So we'll see where it goes and uh, it's actually kind of nice too guys. I'm seeing all this sweet clover. This is this is a big nectar source actually around here. Sweet clover. There's a white one. There's also a yellow variety out here. It's not as uh, abundant but it's quite nice. So I'm basically sitting on a lot of clover honey. <laughs> yeah we'll see where the day goes and uh, go from there. Alright so uh, I set up the tripod for the maggot dispenser and um, I need to pick up a T-joint. That's really the only hardware I need for a thing. I was thinking about going uptown anyways. But in the meantime then I kind of fed the chickens. Uh, I weeded the garden so <laughs> they get the scraps. Uh, that looks nice. Um, and I was just feeling around with the, my airstone. So, right now this is, here's the thing, that pump is not that strong, so you really can't have a whole lot, but I think that's kind of the best I can get out of it. Uh, so, see what that does. I'd like to make compost tea and then one day I'd like to get a little sprayer, but do foliar spraying but uh, I got a I may have one of those little misters I could use one of that um, considering the size of the garden here it's just a minor inconvenience not being the oh no it's just quicker but yeah maybe if I ever find one for cheap then I'll snipe it up but uh, we just have a quick coffee and then go uptown the greenhouse should still be open they're having a two for one sale so I might pick up a strawberries I think Rhubarb, I don't know, peruse there, maybe put some more perennials in the ground, I, I, I like that, but uh, strawberries are doing pretty decent, but they need soil amendment right now, so uh, we'll see where the day goes. Alrighty, so I'm back at this again, so I just ran up town and I picked up a few things, so I got a, a, the, the T-joint and this, um, I guess this coupler. And so all it, all this very simple design. I had the whole pipe already there. I just cut the 45s on there, uh, and there is a pipe 
um, that just sits that connects this one to this one and that's just a friction fit in between so the idea is so that's, you know just just a uh, just cut a hole in the lid sandwich the two and just hammer them together and uh, the idea is the flies go in here uh, this just extends out so that the water can't really run in there and then uh, flies go in there they go in the bucket they you know they get whatever's in the bucket and then uh, I just have some charcoal and uh, old chicken bones and a little shrew I got the other day and uh, yeah they go in there they lay the eggs and theoretically the maggots just come out so yeah I'll go get that set up squirreled away gives me some incentive to actually go mole trapping again <laughs> it, it's it's one of those things you know uh, I mean, it's it's a it's a cycling of uh, nutrients here, and moles got to be trapped anyways. So I should see if they have that on the field. It, I've been doing that for years, ever since I was a wee lad, and uh, so it's, it's kind of like a it's uh, something I'm actually good at. <laughs> uh, also, I went out and I splurged and went to the local greenhouse. And I picked up some rhubarb. Two plants there. You're twenty five percent off. See uh, where I can put them. I might put one here. Maybe I'll go bring the other one to my parents uh, if, if they want one. Um, but yeah, we'll go get that one set up and then uh, go from there. All right, so here is the bucket set up. So I just cobbled with what I had around. So um, a broken bungee cord that was good for nothing. An old nail I pulled from a pallet and then some old rope I had lying around. Um, this should hold, I think. Like, it's... It's on there. I might double loop it. Actually, I can do that. But yeah, the I, the, I if I want to, just I can just take it off here. Take the lid. Put, you know... Little miscreants in there. and It's my... Uh, you're basically converting dead things to maggots and... Good protein source for the chickens. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, no, we'll see how they like it. Alright, so here's my compost tea setup. <laughs> it's crude, but I think... I, I don't know, just gotta try something. So it's bubbling. Um, and I got my tea bag, which is an old sock, and I'm not one to throw stuff out, so... Yeah, I just gotta... It's got a hole there, so why I used it now. And, and see, this just reinforced the idea that I can, because uh, I just have to soak it in or something. And I'd sooner have more of uh, something different, but uh, I don't know, this is what I came up with. And I can still, you know, just take a just take a clothesline and yeah, try to do this with one hand. It's nice. There we go. And uh, what I have in there is just worm castings, about one and a half cups. I just took them from the worm bin and uh, I don't know, I guess we'll see how this works. I guess uh, yeah, the fabric needs to soak in first too. And there's a little bit of sugar, sugar in there too as well, so no, oh, we'll see. I'm just going to leave it running for at least 24 hours. Probably longer than that. Yeah, so I'll be doing it longer than a day and then I'll be doing some foliar sprays with it. I'll go get a spray bottle and I can, because I guess you dilute this too when you give it to the, so it, it, this is three gallons right now. I just had these buckets already around. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. All right, so I'm out just enjoying the weekend is what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm out to have moles. Um, I was gonna go see. So I hooked up. It's not my wagon. This uh, I borrowed this from my father, but uh, it works nicely with the, the three wheeler. Uh, I didn't want to be pulling the bigger wagon with the lawnmower out here. Uh, I'm out here to collect sticks, but then I figured if I'm out here anyways, I might as well go mole trapping. So I picked up the supplies there from the farm and. Go find myself some hills. Uh, it's alfalfa field, so you know they uh, can cause a bit of damage when you start running those hills through a through a mower. So 
yeah, I, I catch them and then uh, it also, you know, now I got a, a use for them. I can uh, feed them indirectly to my chickens. So it was, I, I'd like to, you know, test that system and, you know, I'd like to get some stock in there. So I figured, hey, let's go get some moles. So now I'm going to go set up the trap here. Alright, so I figure, you know, might as well show you how I actually catch these things. I just take a stick, find where it's softest, and see some. Sometimes it, oh, you just find it, and other times it's may make you search. No, honestly, I just. Oh, that's annoying. Especially when you go. Oh, you went far this way. Okay. Sometimes it's right there. You can find them within, you know, you get your stick in there. Find them almost within five seconds. Other times, yeah, you gotta really work for it. And then, I cover the whole thing. Whole thing. Um, this year I did something a little bit different. Got some uh, hair twine. Got some loop. Double loop it here. Do the stick. Pull it off. <clears throat> As long as they'll put, they'll say, you know, they, they don't cover these things. Now moles are very sensitive to light and I found that you want as little light as possible. The more light you put in there, that you allow through, that includes all the holes on top. When they see all that light, they say, oh, that's a big breach in the tunnel. And they shove so much dirt up there and then they shove more dirt and that's what, yeah, that's what triggers the trap then. It's just the dirt. Whereas if it's a small hole, it just, you know, doesn't need much. Then you say, oh, that's just a small pin prick, and then they'll go up further and have less dirt to shove with them. And that's when they actually get in the trap. That's just been my experience with it. And uh, this is just because uh, once you do catch something in there, um, Mr. Coyote might come along and say, hey, that's a good snack. And uh, he'll take your whole trap and everything. So yeah, it's nice to keep him up uh, tied to something. All right, so I'm just heading home again. I collected some clay, collected some sticks, a pile of stuff, biochar. That's the name of the game. I figured out a better way to get the sticks. It's not the most efficient system, but again, it's just, I don't know, I enjoy it. It's just, to me, this is just fun, going around, collecting sticks, seeing what's out and about, plus, uh, the Saskatoons are, um, they're just ripening. So it's really nice to see when you have a, you know, when you got all these berries coming, coming through. I have to go up here with a, with a basket or so. I don't, there's quite a few Saskatoons, but, uh, I mean, oh, clumsy me. Just looking on the camera here and they don't look as, uh, as dark as they are here, but... I mean, they're quite good, so. Yeah, I'm just trying to find out where the, some of the, because you don't, there's lots here, but there's not many bearing. 
so it, it seems like like there's a whole generation coming up and yeah you got little ones there a little bit of fruit on there but yeah it used to be a well there still is lots of choke cherries up here too quite a few plums I actually collect a lot of herbs down here the anise hyssop and there was more but it's a uh, you know, it's, it's kind of neat time for it and I see that stuff is already popping up which is I feel it's quite early for it but uh, everything seemed to come in earlier this year so I'm gonna enjoy a few of these and then <laughs> keep trekking along on that thing all right so here I've got uh, my clay so I had a different bucket and I just put this one with full of water and I stirred it with uh, this mixer here just on the drill and the idea here is because it wasn't you know pure clay what I picked up but there was a lot of other stuff in here so there was a lot of you know roots and uh, so that can be skimmed out and there was some you know sand in there so you know just uh, when you agitate it like that in water um, these you know you're separating it by density and I would gather the, all the material in there is going to be at a different density and it's all going to settle into its own layers much like what you see uh, all around the world you know we have these layers of sediment as a result of Noah's flood so yeah I figured just use the same principle here and then you can be able to separate that out and probably you should be able to siphon off the water the clay basically it seems to actually almost uh, dissolve into the water but that should form its own layer and then drain it off and then you can kind of should be able to scrape it uh, whatever's in there to what you want all right legs never good in here but uh, it's starting to rain which is nice gives me an excuse to stay inside and uh, you know, I, I kind of <laughs> I would like to get some drafts done, kind of like plan future projects. If I'm I kind of at that stumbling point where I just don't have things prepped, and uh, yeah, I just need to get some things on paper. There's some things I'd like to do, but I'd like to actually think them through. Uh, and it's uh, sometimes it's hard to stop and just sit down and actually draft because it's. I don't know, for me, if I'm not working with my hands, then it feels like I'm not doing anything. But either way, I'm, uh, yeah, I just ran the trike good. That one needs to be, the, the muffler on it needs to be fixed. <laughs> it's loud, uh, but manifold on the, I guess, connected to the engine, it, uh, the manifold that's actually connected to the exhaust looks like it, uh, the weld broke. So I'm going to have to take that pipe off at some point and get them welded up again and it was always loud to begin with, but now it's actually, I think it just actually finally broke off. You can see it's, it's loose on there. And as for the lawnmower, I think actually, I'm, I'm going to say we're quite happy with it. Because I done mowed the whole front piece of that thing, uh, of the yard there. Uh, let's see if I can point it out. This, this piece here, hey, there's a bird there. A little robin. And uh, that went well. You know, it ran, it's running good. Uh, at times it still seems a little rich. I can see it sputtering, but I pulled the plug. I did that whole lawn, uh, and uh, and like I wiped the plug off, put them in, ran it, and when I pulled it out, it's as if I had just put it in. It, there was no change to it, so to me it seems pretty good. Uh, but I do want to get the creep out of this thing. So uh, this one's hydrostatic, so it's uh, you know forwards and then backwards, but right now it creeps backwards um, if it's like here it stays but uh, it needs to be just a little more forward but I saw that there's a, this this side panel you can take off and it looks like there's a center pivot screw and then there's an elongated uh, piece here and it seems that you just need to unscrew those and then this whole thing should pivot and that will adjust this handle is what it looks like so I'm going to find a wrench unscrew these two and then get them to a spot where it's a little um, it would be nice to get the creep out of there so when it's actually 
in the neutral position, it stays. It gets annoying when it wants to leave you <laughs> at at, uh, at any throttle, honestly. So, we'll see how it goes. Alright, progress has been made. The mower doesn't creep anymore. That was a simple fix. So, yeah, that's actually just as suspected. Just, I loosened uh, the, the easy way to do this is you turn the mower on, um, shift them to where the uh, the creep like that's where the creep uh, where that's where it stopped. Okay, so that's and that's that was the actual neutral position, but we want it there. So then I shut the machine off, undid the bolts. Then uh, this is this is in the right position of where it needs to be, and then when these are loosened, this can be. Um, you know, actually, it, this one moved down with this one staying where it was. Tighten the bolts again, and voila, the, the neutral has now been shifted to the actual um, stop. So, I don't know, I just fired it up, put it in high throttle, and it didn't move backwards, which was, yeah, when you're so used to it creeping, it's, I don't know, easy to lose sight of, I guess. Then I'm just going to put the cover back on, and then, uh, that's one less thing to do, I guess. I don't know, just something that needs to be doing. Needs to be done with. I don't know, small things. Small wins. Alright, so it's still raining. Well, it's drizzling. I figure I'd go quickly get the rhubarb in. Great time right now. No not water in, eh? So, yeah, I'm just gonna get that in the ground and be done with it. So I just got the rhubarb planted and now it's, it's raining pretty decent actually. So, you know, the good Lord is watering it in for me. <laughs> and uh, it's always a nice bonus, rainwater, you can't beat that. And I figured I'd give a little update on this uh, compost tea. So there are some downs, oh, it changed setup. Why did you change it? Well, that's a funny, good question, glad you asked. The problem is I had the sock draping over here, but... <laughs> What I failed to recognize was the, the wicking effect that it has. So I come back here a couple hours later and there's water here. I'm like, and I didn't put two and two together right away. And then all of a sudden, oh yeah, you can feel the sock. It's just, it's just damp. You know, it's just, it's dripping. So that's kind of neat. Um, I guess that's the one system how you can uh, plant or, or water plants through a wicking system like that. Um, and that's just... Uh, yeah, how, how water travels like that is really neat. But yeah, you can see that it is darker. Um, now it doesn't, maybe it's actually nicer when this is, when the tea bag is over the, the whatchamacallit, the, the bubbler. Maybe it helps to diffuse it more. Uh, but I've had to, I had to squeeze it myself too a little bit just to kind of get more of the, because I think it's pretty, um, Thick, like some of the other meshes I've seen, it's more like a nylon sack. They, uh, they, you know, it really acts like a tea bag, and it just goes out. But this one holds it in pretty good, so I guess the weave is a lot tighter. But it looks like it's doing well, and it's, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how that will do on the plants and whatnot. I'll have to go hunt down myself a little sprayer for that. So, and uh, yeah, the the clay outside is settling. And uh, I'll probably, what I'm planning to do, I'll, I'll pump off the top water and then uh, let it maybe dry out or something. See how that works out. But yeah, I think I'll go uh, sit down for supper and then 
I don't know, I might call it a day here, but we'll, we'll see where things turn out.